Okay, so tonight we are working on a sign for Faircloth Oyster Plant. <clears throat> this started out as a sign put on a regular computer paper, came with the kit. Um, it's pretty thick. You can see here, I'm holding it up close so you can see through it, but you can see here, it's not sanded, just straight paper. And this is how I see a lot of people put signs on buildings. So, what I did was... I took a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and I cut my sign out to the uh, exact size of the sign, flipped it over and gently sanded it for about uh, probably 20 minutes, 15 minutes, felt longer maybe, but I sanded it so thin that front of the sign, back of the sign, you can actually see how thin I sanded it. If I hold it up to, if I hold it up to the light, you can actually see right through the sign. So it is very thin. Um, you can see here that I also accidentally ripped the corner. Not a big deal. Uh, when we put it on, it won't even be a big deal. So from the front, it looks almost exactly like the original. But from the back, you can see that it was heavily, heavily sanded to be extremely, extremely thin. Almost as thin as a tissue, probably thinner. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I place it on walls. And then I'm going to show you real quick how I paint it to uh, look like it's part of the wall so it looks like it's aged. So what we'll do first is start out with a little bit of glue here. This is just wood glue in here that I watered down. So it's about mm, a pea-sized amount of wood glue, maybe a dime-sized amount of wood glue. And then I filled the rest of this well with just water. I'm going to paint it on the back side of the sign. And you'll see that it even becomes more transparent when you paint it, the glue on. Obviously because you're putting a ton of water on it. Um, oops. But this gets it super thin and super pliable to be able to work into your building into the crevices of the wall to make it look like it was painted onto the wall. So, quick application of water and glue. You gotta be very careful because it is extremely fragile. Very easy to rip. And you just line it up on your wall very carefully. And I just ripped it. Good job, Brett. Well, this video might not go as good as I planned, but we're gonna we're gonna roll with it just to show you how everything is fixable, right? We're gonna roll with the punches. <laughs> All right, so place it on the wall. It's as good as I'm gonna get it without ripping it very much. Um, I'm gonna use a sponge and put flatten it down with a sponge so my fingers don't rip it up even more. That's my ripped corner. You can't even tell it's very can't even really tell it's ripped anymore. So we're just going to blot it up with a sponge and push it into all the crevices on this kind of siding, sheet metal siding type material. And I think the sponge actually works a little better for this kind of wall because my finger would have just, if I did this with my finger, it would have ripped the heck out of the sign. So we're going to blot it all on here. Make sure it's pushed into all the crevices. And if you look up close, you can see how it's just pushed right in all the uh, corners of the sign, almost like it's painted on, like it's now part of the sign. I mean, part of the wall. And if you look really close, it's really hard to, to see the difference between where the wall and the paper sign is. So there's almost no, no lip there where the paper was. So now that it's on there, we're going to let it dry for a second. Okay, now you can see the sign's mostly dry. Um, it's good enough to paint on. So we are going to, I love how it took to the cracks and stuff in the siding. That just looks awesome. So now we're going to show you how it, um, how to blot the paint on, how I blot the paint on to make it look like it's part of the aged siding because this looks like a brand new sign on each siding doesn't really fit so we're gonna see how this one goes if it doesn't work very well I got backup signs 
So I got three colors of paint. I got a black, my rust color, and brown. And we're just gonna take a sea sponge. I'll block the shot for a second. All right, got the sea sponge, got some black on it. First, I'm gonna dry it out a little bit on my cardboard, just so it's not so heavy. And we're gonna just blot it on. It's okay if you get a little bit on the wall. Try not to get too much on the wall, but it's all right. The black's really not gonna do too much from what you see, but it kind of just fades out the papery look where you can kind of, you once were able to see the white behind it. I'm not gonna put too much black on it. I don't wanna fade out the white lettering too much. So we're gonna clean out our brush, or I'm sorry, our sponge. I'm actually gonna use a different sponge for a different material, I mean a different pattern this time. So now we're gonna get the brown paint on our sponge, get some good coverage on it. Again, kind of bend the sponge to get a cool texture, different pattern. And we're gonna blot the brown randomly onto the sign. You don't wanna to do too much of it because you don't want to like not be able to see the lettering. Um, kind of defeats the purpose of putting a sign on. Um, but you want to get some color in there to make it kind of look like it's fading out in spots where you might be able to see the wall through the background or just kind of some dirt on the sign. Makes it look like it's been on there for a while. I'm going to do this corner heavier just for fun. Really blot the heck out of that corner. Maybe up here too. Really no rhyme or reason to it, just whatever feels right. And there's two colors on there. Starts to fade it out, just the hair. And now that I'm looking at this, I probably should have done my walls a little bit darker, but I don't know. It'll be all right. Looks like it was painted on with black paint. It's all right. And last, we're gonna do, once my sponge is dry, a little bit of rust color since it is a sheet metal building <clears throat> and this is a thicker paint I'm using um Pueblo by Folk Art and Folk Art just tends to be a thicker paint this might be too bright I'm probably gonna hate this but we'll see what it looks like you never know until you do it take a little bit of risk this is really bright we're gonna go really light with this and we're just gonna blot it on Put some random rust pattern on the sign. Since this is a seaside building, uh, we don't want it to look pristine since it's a metal building beside the ocean. It doesn't really make much sense to, unless it was brand new, but we're not going for that look. And I'm not being very uh, particular with this again. Kind of randomly blotting it on, kind of got it over a little bit, smooth it out with my finger. And also, keep in mind, we'll be going over the whole wall with some weathering dusts, which is just chalk pastel, as you know, um, again, but, so that's what I'm at. I'm actually, I'm fairly happy with that. You can read the sign, kind of use my finger here to get a little bit of the word, a little bit of the words back out. And uh, so that's what we're at so far with it. Oops, I'll hold it in the camera so you guys can actually see it. Bad camera chip, camera menship, whatever you call it. But that's where we're at. So we just blotted on, no rhyme or reason, weather it pretty good. Um, once we add the dusts, it'll fade that out a little bit. I'll probably put some white dust on it and everything. But that is how I put my signs on my buildings. So I hope that helps someone out if you like it. Give us a thumbs up, share it. Uh, hopefully someone can use this. All right, see you later.